Nick Blackwell remains in a medically induced coma. According to the latest medical updates, it's very possible that he'll be brought out of the coma in the next 24 hours. And the neurosurgeon who is tending to him during this time, a man named Peter Hamlin, who's incidentally the same neurosurgeon that tended to Michael Watson when he had a brain injury all those years ago in the 90s. According to him, the swelling on Nick Blackwell's brain is very minimal. And because of that, they have not had to do brain surgery because normally when these type of injuries happen, certainly in the case of Michael Watson and Gerald McClellan and even Spencer Oliver, they had to uh, open those guys' heads up and perform surgery on their brains. And one of the reasons that they had to open their heads up is because they had a blood clot. All those guys had a blood clot in their brain and their brain was swelling and pushing up against the side of their skull, the inside of their skull, and that was damaging the brain even more. So they had to remove large parts of the skull to allow the brain to swell without pressing up against the side of the skull. I know, <laughs> sorry if any of you are squeamish, but that's what happens in them situations. But with Nick Blackwell, he was provided excellent medical care in the arena, and excellent care on the way to the hospital and excellent care in the hospital, far better care than the likes of Gerald McClellan and Nigel, uh, sorry, Gerald McClellan and uh, Michael Watson received. And because of that, according to this neurosurgeon who's tended to him, Peter Hamlin, he says that uh, Nick Blackwell will probably be able to emerge from this coma, this medically induced coma in the next 24 hours with very little damage so he may well make a full recovery we'll wait and see but i personally believe and a, a few people have asked me about this in the past day or so they've asked me do i think that channel five are still going to show boxing after this nick blackwell incident my answer to that is it all depends on how fully Nick Blackwell recovers, in my opinion. Because one of the reasons that they stopped showing boxing on terrestrial TV in the first place in the UK was because of the Michael Watson, Gerald McClellan incidents and a few other incidents of, of a similar nature. Because of those incidents, terrestrial television like ITV and BBC they washed their hands of boxing. They, they, they didn't want any more of that type of bad uh, publicity and bad press surrounding any events that they put on. So I think that the future of boxing on terrestrial TV, at least for the next few years, is going to hinge on how fully Nick Blackwell recovers. If he ends up making a full recovery and he's up and talking and walking around within a couple of weeks, then I think they're still going to go ahead on ITV. Pro they're probably still going to go ahead on ITV and Channel 5 showing boxing. But if he ends up, and let's hope this ain't the case, but if he ends up being seriously affected long term by these injuries and ends up being crippled or whatever like Michael Watson and Gerald McClellan, then I don't think we're going to see boxing on terrestrial TV in the UK for some years to come. Uh, that's just how I feel about it. So it's not only the welfare of Nick Blackwell, and that is obviously the priority here. Let's not get it confused. But in my opinion, it's also the future of boxing on terrestrial TV in the UK that is on the line right now. So, yeah. We'll see what happens and we'll see where this goes. But that's the current status of Nick Blackwell at the moment. He's due to be brought out of the medically induced coma within the next 24 hours. 
and he hasn't had to have invasive uh, brain surgery. The swelling on his brain is minimal. So there's a very good chance that he'll make a full recovery. An even better recovery possibly than Spencer Oliver made. Because as I say, Spencer Oliver had to have brain surgery. But even though he had that, he made a full recovery. You know, uh, I, I don't know if he still gets headaches or whatnot. But his motor skills, you know, his, his speech and his movement and everything is just 100% normal. So we can only hope for Nick Blackhawk to make a similar recovery or better. Drop your comments in the comment section below, people, if anybody's got any more information on this. It's a very awkward time, a very difficult time for the people involved in the whole situation. Obviously, the referee, the uh, the cornerman, Gary Lockett, the trainer of Nick Blackwell, and also the promoter, Mick Hennessy. You know, they've had to be at the hospital with Nick Blackwell's family, looking them in the eye. And I'm sure some of them family members, if not all of them, it will have gone through their mind that Mick Hennessy, Gary Lockett, these are two men who could have saved Nick Blackwell from this type of injury. If they just pulled him out of the fight, particularly Gary Lockett. And, you know, the referee the same. The British Border Boxing Controller come out and supported the referee. They've supported... Uh, Gary Lockett Personally I think the uh, I really think the fight could have been stopped About round 8 I really do feel that um, Nick Blackwell wasn't in the fight He was getting Comprehensively beaten And, and incidentally This situation where Chris Eubank Sr. has apparently Told his son to stop hitting Nick Blackwell in the head Because well, people are interpreting it in different ways. Some people are saying Eubank Sr. said that because he was worried about the condition of Nick Blackwell. Other people are saying, no, it's got nothing to do with that. It was just strategic getting his son to go to the body to set up the knockout. I've looked at the clip of where Eubank Sr. is saying this numerous times, and I, I have absolutely no doubt that he was worried about the welfare of Nick Blackwell. No doubt. But I, I can't. I just can't get my head around this nonsense where people are trying to make out as though Eubank Sr. wasn't looking out for the welfare of Nick Blackwell. Of course he was. He was at ringside imploring the referee to stop the fight on several occasions and the referee turned around to him and, and told him to be quiet. Eubank Sr. Has said over the past couple of years on numerous occasions in interviews and at press conferences, the referees are going to have to be very careful to look after the welfare of Eubank Jr.'s opponents. So the prospect of one of Eubank Jr.'s opponents getting seriously injured, like Michael Watson, is constantly in Eubank Sr.'s mind. Do you really think he wants his son to go through what he went through of Michael Watson, much less any of his opponents? Eubank Sr. was profoundly affected by what happened in that Michael Watson fight. And after the Michael Watson fight, everybody who remembers and who watched Eubank Sr.'s career at the time will remember that in the subsequent fights, uh, particularly in, the, in the, the couple of years after that fight, Eubank Sr. lost his quote-unquote killer instinct. There were many occasions after the Michael Watson fight where he had opponents hurt and you'd see him in the ring back off and he wouldn't finish them because he was so worried about injuring someone again like he injured Michael Watson. And when he was in the corner with his son, I believe it was at the end of the eighth round, he said to him, if the ref don't stop it, Nick Blackwell's going to get hurt. As in seriously hurt. Now why would he tell his son that? If he wants his son to go out there and take the guy out. He wouldn't. He's telling his son, the guy's going to get seriously hurt if you keep banging him in, in the head with them head punches. That, that's not a comment designed to make his son go out there and hit him in the head, is it? Obviously not. His son don't want to hurt nobody. His son don't want to put nobody in a coma. 
gives nobody brain damage. Eubank Sr. certainly don't want his son to give nobody brain damage and go through what he went through and have his opponent go through what Michael Watson went through. I don't know what nonsense is in people's minds when they actually are trying to say that Eubank Sr. didn't care about the welfare of Nick Blackwell. He clearly did. And if you watch the ninth round and even the 10th round after Eubank Sr. Had, you know, gives that talk to Junior in the corner, Junior comes out and has by far his lowest volume round in the fight in the ninth round and most of the 10th round. He's hardly throwing anything. And he's just touching Nick Blackwell with little jabs. Whereas before that, he was going to town on him. And it's the same for as long as the 10th round lasts for the most part. He's not going to town on Nick Blackwell like he was earlier on in the fight. And that came directly after what his dad told him in the corner. So it was he had planted a seed in Junior's head. Look, you, you might end up seriously hurting this guy. You're putting such a beating on him. So, look, nobody's saying that Eubank Sr. is perfect. Nobody's saying he's a saint. But he is a, a, a human being with a conscience, people. You know, I don't see why people find it so difficult to believe that he was worried about Nick Blackwell. He clearly was. Why else would he tell his son, this guy's going to get hurt if you keep hitting him like this? Take him out to the body. Because <laughs> he didn't want the guy to get seriously injured. It is what it is, folks. So that's my take on the whole situation. Um, we'll see what happens. I did have something else I was going to talk about regarding this fight. Uh, I can't exactly remember what it was. It's gone from my memory at the moment. What have I talked about? I've talked about the uh, injury to Blackwell. I've talked about what happened in the corner between senior and junior. Oh, there was something else. If I don't mention it now, it's going to bug me. <laughs> it's going to seriously bug me. Oh, I can't think what it was. Maybe I'll have to save it for another video, people. So, yeah, drop your comments below. Let me know how you feel about everything I talked about in this video. Um, Eubank Jr., how will this affect him? Again, I guess that depends on how well Nick Blackwell recovers. It affected his dad profoundly, seeing what happened to Michael Watson. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see. I think you're probably going to see a change now in the referee, and certainly for the next few weeks, uh, following what's happened to Nick Blackhall, you're going to see a, a change in the referee in the UK. I mean, the referees in the UK tend to jump in early anyway, quite a lot of the time, but I think you're going to see more of it in the next few weeks. I remember when Gerald McClellan got seriously hurt. The week after, or the weekend after that fight, it was either the weekend after that fight or maybe two weekends after that fight, uh, Prince Nassim hammered for a guy called Sergio Liendo. And he knocked this guy, wow, I mean, he, he dropped the guy and the guy was seriously hurt. He dropped him with a left hook. I remember it very clearly. You could have stopped the fight right there. The guy was totally gone. And when the guy got back up, Nassim stretched him out with, I think, a right hand. The guy was virtually out cold. It was a brutal, brutal knockout. And I remember at the time, I think it was Jim Watt commentating, and he was extremely critical of the referee, particularly just so soon after what had happened to Gerald McClellan. He was saying, how the hell could the referee allow this? And in most other shows around that time, the referees were jumping in a lot sooner and they weren't letting the fights go on quite so long. Uh, a lot, of, uh, you know, a lot of the refs anyway, because they were very concerned. Uh, ITV don't want that type of negative publicity. Uh, none of the broadcasters do. So we're probably going to see more of that in the coming weeks and months and what have you. Anyway, let me stop waffling people. It's your boy Hatman, I'm out.